Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the webinar. Um, we will start officially in a couple minutes, but I believe that right now uh, there's a poll up on your screen on a couple questions. Uh, fill it out if you wish. Uh, this will help us guide the conversation a little bit. Um, and again, official will start the webinar in a couple of minutes, but uh, there's no point waiting. We'll have a, a little bit of informal conversation right now with our special guest, uh, Fred. Uh, Fred, how are you? Doing good, Ping. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward awesome. to this discussion. Very passionate. I'm very passionate yeah. about it. Thank you, thank you. And again, we'll start a formal part in just a couple of minutes. Give some time to join uh, to, to everyone who who's scrambling with, uh, with GoToWebinar and everything. Uh, but hey, Fred, uh, let me just check here. Do we have the poll questions on? Uh, Looks like we have the first one. Does your building control system have access to the internet? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is a question that everybody, I think, has to stop and ask yourself. Um, but I mean, you can't, you can't really get a get started until you know what this answer is. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So uh, I think we have some uh, organizers helping us here. Uh, Monica, Angela, is the poll question up? Oh, we've actually got the results. Ninety-one percent say uh, yes. Excellent. How about that? Wonderful. That's that one. We, got, we can run another one if you want to. Yeah, let's run the second one. Uh, Fred, I think the second question uh, is um, how many of these systems are converged uh, compared to dedicated? Um, so, Fred, in your in your experience, I mean, again, we'll, we'll come back to your background a little bit, but in, in your experience, the clients you're working with or the, the, the people you, you talk to, um, how often are the building control systems, building automation systems, standalone on their own uh, with their own network? Uh, and how often is it converged sharing uh, the infrastructure with other services? Excuse me, on average, and it, and it also depends on the, the function of the building, but on average, I would say at least 65, 70% of the networks that I've looked at, they, they're definitely converged. In some form yeah. or fashion. So, okay. uh, but yeah, they're they're definitely converged. I mean, uh, and some of the techniques that people do this are kind of interesting. How they get them to uh, stitch together. We'll get into some of that later on. I'll show a couple of slides on that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think we're going to get started just about now. We quite attendees on so let's get started again welcome everyone to the webinar uh, thank you very much for joining us my name is Ping I'm CEO of uh, Optical Networks uh, we have a very special guest with us today uh, Fred from Intelligent Buildings Fred is a director of cybersecurity at Intelligent Buildings we've known each other for uh, a little while now a couple of years and he does some really cool things so when we came up with the topic of cybersecurity we want to push it out there reached out to Fred and it's a very passionate topic for him um, Fred, you want to say a couple of words? Maybe give us a, a little background of, of your experience, your your um, your knowledge, uh, who you work with, uh, what you do. Sure. Uh, I originally came from the IT world and moved over into the control space in 2000. And the uh, I got to say, it was a pretty it was a culture shock because where I came from, there were policies, procedures, and that type of thing. But in the controls world there really wasn't anything. It was more like the Wild West. But, however, I drank the Kool-Aid and about a year into it, I was just like everybody else, security through obscurity. Um, I've worked through the years with, been fortunate to work through the years with people like AT&T, Macy's, uh, Chevron, um, Entertainment Group, I can't mention their name, but they're worldwide. Um, and everywhere that I've looked, and you would be surprised in some of the data centers, and this is not to pick on any one of those, but the data centers, even as much security was inside there, there wasn't a whole lot on the control system. But anyway, fast forward, um, work for uh, controls integrators, two companies, and now I'm in intelligent buildings, and our job is to give our customers what they need to develop a smart, secure building. Excellent. Thank you. 
Um, you want? Do you want to say a few more words about intelligent buildings, just so we, we sure. give everyone an idea? The intelligent buildings, and the thing that really attracted me to to intelligent buildings is the fact that they are the customer advocate. We're consultants, but what our job is to do is to not just necessarily uh, put our will on the customer. What we do is we analyze how they how they stand now and how to get there and uh, we we are agnostic to anything so we we take a wholehearted or holistic look at what systems they have where they want to go and this is what it takes to get there and you may not be able to get where you want to go but we'll get you, we'll get you a system that's as close as possible and and the customers that we have with this with intelligent buildings um, you know they get that and they're they are looking for smart secure buildings Excellent. Thank you, Fred. Well, again, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar about uh, cybersecurity and building automation systems. Uh, we titled it, I can hack into your building, and you'll see that uh, in just a moment and stop me. So uh, we'll take a moment to talk about uh, the vulnerability in the commercial internet things or the building control systems, building automation systems. Uh, we'll take a moment to look at uh, the history. How do we get here? Uh, Fred, give a, a little glimpse of it. And then we'll go into what can we do about it. I mean, there's been enough talk in the industry uh, about how dangerous this is, and one talks about Target and, and all these other places. Uh, but what do we do about it? Um, of course, if you're the White House, if you're a critical infrastructure, you have the funds, uh, and you have the means, and you have the, the priority to make that important uh, an important topic. But if you work for a smaller shop, if you work for a smaller integrator, uh, it is not out of your scope, it is not out of your possibility to offer uh, higher security for, um, for, your, for your projects, for your customers. And we'll, we'll explore into what we can do about that. So uh, let's go right into it. Fred, you, you prepared some pretty cool things. Um, I think the first thing we want to look at is um, how vulnerable are we? Uh, how, can you give us an idea? I mean, you did a demo for, for me and my staff a couple weeks ago, which was amazing. And unfortunately for everyone here, we, we, can't, we can't make that public because it's a little bit too sensitive. But uh, maybe we will cover a few things about that. Um, and Fred, sorry, I apologize. Let me just uh, touch base on a couple of logistic things. Uh, sure. At any time, anyone, if you have questions, um, and uh, especially acronyms for say things like BAS or uh, or CIA, uh, and you're not sure what the acronym is, please go ahead and type it into your question box um, or organize it in the background. We'll push it out to Fred and, and I, and we'll we'll get to to you either by text or bring it up right forward. So let's go right again, Fred. You want to do a little demo for us, please? Sure, and but I want to. I got to mention this. I saw the results of the second poll, and interestingly enough, the people that answered the questions almost lined up directly with what I said. Seven percent of them oh, said excellent. they had yeah, yeah, yeah. converged network. So Great. that was that, I thought that was kind of interesting because um, <laughs> you know I'm working on the inside and I see all this stuff and I go with my stats, but it's I'm really that's encouraging that people kind of realize where they're at, which tells me. People are thinking about these things. And anyway, yeah. so what we're going to get to right off the bat is, like Ping said, is, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a static demonstration. Uh, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to hack something on real time because there's, like he says, too much sensitivity there. All right, so, and we're dealing specifically with BACnet in control systems today because BACnet, and most, most of the people that are on here, I think are familiar with what BACnet is and what it does, but I, I just want to give a kind of a little background on that first. Is in the in the controls world, when I first went in, everything was LAN based, and it's a serial communication. Well, yep. the 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 push was to make things open and be to be able to cross talk across platforms and that kind of thing, and so, <clears throat> excuse me. BACnet, I mean, it's been around for a while, but the push started uh, sometime in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, to get a, not only BACnet, but BACnet over IP. And the thing about it is, in that effort to make things more converged and more uh, have the capability to talk across platforms and that kind of thing, and 
getting the industry to standardize on something. BACnet has become king in a lot of respects. BACnet IP more so now that we have you know reliable networks, so people are not afraid of sticking a device on there that may be considered critical or not. So anyway, when when the industry did that. Uh, at the time, it was still security through obscurity. Well, we're no longer in those days. And uh, some of you guys may be familiar with uh, an incident that happened to a manufacturer in our industry about a security piece, and that kind of started the whole ball rolling. But I had yeah. started actually working in working this way before that. And so now, um, what we're faced with now is we've got the convenience factor. We've taken our control systems, and I come from an integrator, so I'm pointing the finger at myself, is, you know, we stuck the systems out on the web because we wanted the engineer to be able to reach it from home on the weekend. Uh, we had to learn IP techniques or minimalistic IT uh, things such as setting IP addresses. Then you introduce the layer of BACnet IP, and you're exposing that to the web. Well, what we just did, and if you look at this diagram that I have up here, most of you may know, and if you don't, that BACnet doesn't require, and they're working on some secure now, but BACnet does not require a username and password. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why do I care? Well, the, the front end, as some people call it, or the supervisory field controller, it has a username and password, and the BBMDs, uh, excuse me, the BACnet devices are talking to it. Well, if you've seen some of my articles months ago, it was, you know, about the front ends themselves. And one day it was like the bells just went off in my head. And when I was talking about front ends, about managing your passwords and, you know, doing that kind of thing. Well, that was great. But now that the BBMD has come to light, not that for us it hadn't come to light, but it's showing up in the bad guys, bad guys realm. Uh, the BBMD, which means BACnet broadcast management device, um, exposing that to the web, there is no username and password. And every device that's below it is exposed now. So you don't even have to have all the other IPs. If you can get to the BBMD, you can get to everything below it. In this diagram that I'm showing here is the attacker's up there, and he's, he's, he's using the same tools that I do, IoT search engines, and he finds the BBMD. <clears throat> well, if he finds one, if you look on the left side of the page, the BBMD is under is circled in red. This device sits on the network, and all the devices to the left are quote non-critical. They're just doing air conditioning or conditioning the spaces and so on. However, to the right is the data center. There's a crack unit on there. A crack unit means computer room, air conditioning unit, UPS, un uninterruptible power supply generator, so on and so forth. Well, IT has two routers sitting there, and they're on different subnets or different network network address areas. Well, the BBMD just punched a hole through that. So all those firewall rules and everything are just gone. So now the bad guy can actually hit this BBMD, and when I'm, I'm going to show you a, some of the, a little bit of the tool and what it can do, they can now jump over to the, the generator. And if they want to, they can run it dry. They can uh, raise all the set points on the data center floor, and then you start having server strip off. So, I mean, yeah. uh, that's the kind of outlay of uh, where we're at now. So uh, let me summarize this set, and, and just for those who may not become familiar with the BACnet world, BBMD is, again, it's a BACnet broadcast mediation. Is that right? Management device. Management device. And this allows uh, messages from one side to be we forward it uh, to the other side, uh, correct? Correct. And what you showed here is that the intention was to create two se segments, two separate network, two separate sections, uh, two separate systems, and for some reason they needed some information from one side to reach the other side, and so they, they put in this, this link, this IP router using BBMDs plus BBMDs, and what you're telling us is that these BBMDs are, are very good for backnet. They, they allow us to, to pull information from one segment to another segment, but it can be easily leveraged by attackers to jump from one segment that may intentionally have been uh, lower 
um, lower risk, uh, lower vulnerability, uh, and then another segment that's a little higher vulnerability, but using these BBMDs, it can cross over very easily. Is that correct? That is 100% correct. And, and the converge, you know, we talk about converge in relationship to the converge with the corporate network. Well, even in the back, in the controls world, we want to converge the different segments and have a unified user interface. So in order to do that, you may have to jump across sub subnets, and the BBMD helps you do that. Excellent. Uh, now, Fred, so, okay, that, it's, it's all good and great. Okay, good. I mean, it's, 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 how do you get from one segment? How do you even get on a segment? Uh, it, you know, can't be that easy, is it, to, to get access <laughs> to a BBMD? It, it's very easy. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, this is, you know, I had a guy tell me one time when I first started getting into this, he says, think evil, do good. And so my mind always works, you know, you got to have that one side that's always on the hunt, and that's what I do, I, I hunt. And then the other side is, okay, so how do I stop this? You know, so I'm almost living a parallel life at once. But anyway, there's IoT search engines out there. You guys have probably seen some stuff I've written about. No need to mention the names, but they are specifically mm -hmm. designed to find IoT devices. And, yep. and our manufacturers and even us integrators have been kind enough to label them BBMD. So the information, <laughs> <laughs> so when you do the search, you can literally type in BBMD and it'll come up. So driving along the highway and having a sign that says, um, Back door this way. <laughs> yeah, and unlock. And unlock. So you, yeah, use yeah, that's I, <laughs> you use the IoT search engine to find these things. And now, the from the integrator side, Modbus, Backnet, whatever the case may be, there's been a lot of free tools out there, and nobody cared about them but the integrators. Okay, so because we needed to be able to scan the networks to see if everything is up and talking. Well, this is this is taking it to the next layer here. This is a particular uh, BACnet scanner, and what I did was I found, uh, you can find the um, IP address through one of the IoT search engines. You can drop it in here, and I mean, it literally took me seconds to pull back a list of all the devices. Keep in mind, I have one IP address. It's all I have. Right. Right. <clears throat> so this particular tool will allow you to take things even deep, deeper. Okay, so I've found the devices, now what do I do? Well, this is a full view of what the tool looks like, and if you'll notice, in the middle, I've got, I'm monitoring real-time values from the devices, and down below, in the bottom left, there are all the points, and the points, again, the integrator was kind enough to name these things, humidity, temperature, fan control, so on and so forth. Uh, there's and if I can do a sidebar in the cyber in the cyber community for ICS or industrial control systems, they have already said we're not naming things plain English anymore because of this very thing. Because I, I, there's one that I did a test on, and I found the chiller plant, and I could do a I could lock them out. Okay, but the other thing is over on the far right. This is where I can make modifications to set points, or I can take a VFD to 100%, and it doesn't need to be. All I got to do is on the bottom left, click on a point, and it displays the backnet properties. And then over on the, uh, you see the notation, it says editable properties. That means I can actually make changes. My God. Now, so. Okay, hold on. If you, if you don't mind, I'm going to step right back. So you said sure. um, you use one of those IoT search engines. Again, for those who are not familiar with those, uh, there's quite a few of them, and we, we won't mention them by name, but they are very simple. They, they look exactly like Google. Uh, you can type in uh, something, right? You can type in... Uh, building control. Building controls, and it will pull up in the world all the building controls that's connected to the Internet and exposed. Uh, mm -hmm. Correct, Fred? That is correct. And so in this uh, exercise here, you found one, just any anyone. You took the IP address of a BBMD, uh, which is exposed to the internet, and using the BBMD, you can access anything that the BBMD is connected to. And not only can you see things, you can change things. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now, even before we go uh, uh, further, and uh, uh, let me just remind the audience, uh, we love participation, so please go ahead, write your comments, write your questions, and we'll get to you. Um, but this, I mean, you must, in this case, it must have been just, you know, a mom and pop shop. It couldn't have been something serious or something important. I, I mean, these guys should know what they're doing. No? I wish I could say that was the case, um, but it's not. I mean, just to be quite blunt. Um, I've had opportunities to go after. Now, I, let me back up and say this: is customers will ask me to do this, is to hunt them down, and some of them are right. fairly. We're not going to mention names, but they're fairly well known. And again, I got to say, we can't. This is not a. I'm pointing fingers at people, or people are. You know, this is a bad, bad, bad you know, company. You got to remember how we got started in this. Was this was a convenience thing, and who cared about it? So I'm, all this is saying is bringing to light, you know. Okay, if you haven't taken a look at your system in a while, it might be time to do so. But right. and I want to say I want to say one thing, and I may have over, I may not have touched on this well enough. Keep in mind, this information came in, and I never entered a username and password. I don't have to. Right. Right. Now, uh, actually, we have a very timely question. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Craig is asking us, we're talking about sites with no firewalls, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now, anyone coming from the IT world, this would be a gigantic no-no. It's, it's, it's just completely idiotic. But uh, is it common to have building control systems connected to the Internet with no firewalls? Yes. It's, it, I would say up till 2000 and <clears throat> let's see, 2013, um, there were still a lot of companies that were actively doing that. Now I have seen uh, it begin to drop off, and you know as well as I do, these systems. It's not like an IT asset that has a three to five year life cycle. These these systems have a 30 year life cycle or a 20 year life cycle. So right. there are a lot of systems that were put out there in like 2005. And nobody's done anything to them, so it's 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 not a matter of people are trying to do this intentionally. But to give you a couple of uh, stats, right before we got on the uh, this on this webinar, I did a pull from one of the search engines, and in the U.S. and I, what I did was for IoT devices. Now this can include other things and building control systems, but there right. were 42 million devices connected. Okay. 42 million devices? Yes. In the world, there's 555 million uh, connected IoT devices that these search engines are finding, okay? Right. So, so then when you start getting specific, you know, BACnet, um, the numbers fluctuate because these search engines do 24-hour cycles, and they're always out there, you know, looking, looking. But it, it's in the thousands that these BBMDs are sitting outside of a network firewall. So there are over thousands of BBMDs which require no username, password, no authentication uh, that are connected to the internet without a firewall. And uh, let me just summarize what you just said there again, and both of us have been in the industry for a little while. Um, we're not pointing fingers to anyone, it's that yeah. uh, back no, before Target, let's just face it, before Target, a lot of us put in systems and, and it was important to pull that data, you know, be able to commission and, and continuously commission and uh, re remotely be able to access it and work over our, our, our customer, our vendors. And so we sometimes would just put on a DSL line um, exactly. and we wouldn't get, we wouldn't get a, a firewall. Um, because again, I think at back then it was well. Who cares? It's 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 a uh, it's a lighting control. It's a uh, load automation control. But now, in light of now looking at this BBMD, what you're saying is that yeah, maybe it was just a little bit, especially with the vulnerability of BBMDs. Adding them in now, you're creating this bridge into things that could be a lot more serious. Well, the you've probably heard me say this time and time again a while back. It's it's kind of funny the way things have. Not funny, but the uh, corporate network has been sitting there, and the the access point for the bad guy to get into the corporate network is a control system because he knows it's not that well protected. So that was bad enough. 
And the, the only thing between him and the corporate network was the username and password of the BMS system or the control system network. Now we've added another punch hole into the system, which is this BBMD. Mm -hmm. And now I don't even care about username and password. I just need to get into the corporate network. And I want to say a, one more stat for the everybody's listening. You may not know whether or not you've been hacked, and you may not know 243 days. That's the average number of days before yeah. somebody discovers that they've been hit. That's right. So then, That's right. Too late. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to qualify this one. The 243 days is as part of uh, uh, an extensive research, and that includes all the IT assets. So I'm going to I'm going to totally go go on a guess, and I, I, tell me if you agree with me that in the operational technology world, uh, the number is probably the infinity side. Well, that's a good point because in the IT side, there are there's devices, hardware, and software that monitor the traffic flow. But most, and I'll say 99 percent, uh, let's say 90 percent of the control networks, there is no oversight. There's you don't know if the thing's supposed to be on there or not. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, Fred, let's let's continue because you have some pretty good things here, um, and. Uh, just a quick comment from one of our listeners, Josh. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. He's, uh, he added that uh, even sites that are protected with firewalls may be susceptible, accessible via BBMDs to any site with no firewalls, uh, just like Fred is mentioning, punching a hole through the firewall. So uh, just, to, just to add to what Josh is saying here, is that just like what you're saying at the beginning, uh, perhaps you put in a firewall in three of your four segments, the fourth segment, uh, you believe was low risk, low vulnerability, or, or maybe just an oversight does not have a firewall, and now even though three of them were behind firewalls, they're actually all exposed. Yeah, that's a that's good point. That's what you're showing us. Yeah. yeah, Josh is right on. Cool. That that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank which you. Josh. Which is also awesome. right. Yeah, which, which is encouraging to me because the thing is, I don't want to be the only person that knows this. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, yeah. there are a lot of other people, but. That's what we got to do is educate. Um, the slide that I'm showing here, uh, real quick, and we'll kind of burn through some of these, um, but this is a little bit more uh, of some of the other things that you can do with this particular tool. If you'll notice, what I've done is I've actually selected the device, and I can do a, I don't have the drop down shown, but you can do a, a cold start, and you can actually set it offline. So if I'm the bad guy, I could go in and easily set off, all, take all your devices offline. What does that matter? Well, you tell me. I mean, it just depends on the criticality. This one here yep. is I can go in and edit your, uh, this is a calendar, but the actual schedule edit, you can go in and edit the schedules. You can go in and acknowledge the alarms. You can go in, you can do everything, including look at the historical logs of the system with this tool. And guess how much it costs? Um, a few thousand dollars. It's free. The tool that you're using right here. It's free. <laughs> we love the open community. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we, um, if you want to move over to, I mean, we've been talking about the, uh, the, you know, the corporate networks and converged and everything, but there's also these networks that people are they're safe because they're not attached to anything, including. Uh, exposed directly to the web. <laughs> what I'm showing right. here is, is one of the things everybody needs to keep in mind, and this also depends on, uh, well, I don't want to even qualify it that way. If you have rooftops and you've got gensets and you've got things that are outside of your building, there's a chance that there's a network drop that goes out there. And what, right. <laughs> what I was saying earlier about the oversight is there is no oversight. So if I were to go out to a generator and unplug and plug it into my laptop, I now have your entire control network. And right, right. So, 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 so I mean, you might not be able to access it remotely. So me from Vancouver, I can't get into a site in Virginia, but I can go behind your, 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 your maintenance shop, uh, unplug an air handler, um, a chiller, plug it into my laptop, and the beauty of open networking, I'm not on, and find a BBMD if I wanted to, or maybe I don't even have to. You don't I'm have in. to. Yeah. 
and and let me just say one thing about the um, not being able to access it remotely. There are devices that I could plug in line with your network drop. Then I go home and at my leisure I can enter your network via cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do Simple that. Raspberry Pi with a with a three D yeah. dongle. Yeah, perfect. Yep. So yep. when you're when you're taking a look at your your network and trying to determine you know where you stand, I mean yes, you need to focus on all the other stuff we said, but I'm gonna again can't mention names, but um, this data center group wanted me to look at their system and they had it buttoned up pretty good so what does Fred do but he gets out and starts walking around the parking lot and, I, and I, I saw the generator and so I unplugged the generator put my laptop on it and just left it out there and I went in and I said um, told the guy I said I'm on your network and he says how and I said, well, I'm plugged into it in the generator. And he said, well, we have cameras back there. And I said, no, you don't. That's the first thing I look for. Sure enough, they didn't. And I said, so I could just leave my laptop out there. And or that, gives you, that really brought home to them, you know, hey, just because it's uh, in a fenced backyard, if there's not a camera back there, it doesn't mean anything. So. so interesting. You're bringing up a topic which actually was released in, in – uh... SIA just recently about combining physical security with digital security or cybersecurity. Uh, that that's exactly what you just mentioned there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Let's uh, let's move on. Um, we we had planned to talk a little bit about how we got here. Uh, if you don't mind, we're going to zip through this one a little quicker because I really want to get to the, the next section. But on this one, uh, what what Fred taught me uh, when we're talking is that uh, there's this concept of what we'll called the CIA triad. Um, there's no real source that defines the CIA trial, but it, it's a topic that's used uh, very regularly. It's a concept that's used very uh, powerful in the information security world. And uh, it comes down to confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Very, very easily put is confidentiality is like, if I was able to get the, your data, can I read a plain text? So one way to get confidentiality in networking, in information, is encryption. Uh, integrity is uh, is the data right for me as a user if I get data is the data correct um, and then third availability is when I need the data when I need access to the system is it there so in the IT world in information security world um, the, the order typically that we look at is CIA confidentiality first integrity second availability number three now they're all very close I mean availability of course if it's not available that this goes down, uh, but you you mentioned that that if we look at the operational world, it's kind of flipped upside down. It is exactly flipped upside down because why is it? Uh, what's important to the control world is availability. I need to make sure that I, these devices are talking. That goes back to the you know the open perverse integrity. The the information needs to be good in order to make the control and confidentiality. I'm going to say that that triangle, if you could break that bottom right out, it would be it would right. be way over to the bottom because it, it's been low priority. Right, and and that's what this topic is here. This webinar and all the exercise you're doing and, and, and volunteering your time to all these different uh, speaking opportunities and things like that, it, it's to bring more awareness about that confidentiality piece. We really need to bring that into our, I mean, at least complete the triangle, and then we, hopefully we can flip it around a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's move on. Like again, in the industry, we've talked a lot about the vulnerability of smart buildings, of the Internet of Things. Uh, I think you've proven to us now with thousands of BBMDs exposed to the Internet, uh, and perhaps more if you were to go through them. Um, it's clearly a, a big problem and something very, very important. I mean, you're hired to go and look at these things. Can you give us some idea? What can we do? I mean, us. If, if I'm an integrator, I'm working on a shop that's, you know, I'm working on a project that's worth a few thousand dollars. I, I don't have the resource to bring in, you know, IT guys 24-7 to, to, to monitor and, and design all this stuff. What can we do uh, to protect ourselves? The, uh, let me say this, and, and I mean, this is an example I think everybody can identify with, is if you have a sticker in your yard that says you have a, a an alarm system inside, yeah. chances are when somebody's patrolling, they're going to go on past you. 
okay? If there's, in the house is sitting there with none, that's who they're going to go into. Now, kind of a little different. We know that these IoT search engines are out there looking for you. If, right. If you, all you do is pull it behind the firewall, first and foremost, that's the first thing, is know what's on your network. I call it network creep. Most people, when the integrator hands it over in a year or two years, I find that that network has changed. Somebody added something here, took something off here. Know how your network's configured. And at the, take a look at your, your control system users. Is everybody an admin? That's a no-no. As you know, Ping, in the IT world, you only give those that need admin rights admin rights. Yeah, and yeah. when's the last time you changed your password? And when an employee leaves, remove that user. Because I personally, in my integration days, have gone through control systems of five years old, and employees that were there five years ago are still in there. So that's yeah. a that's low hanging fruit. I mean, that doesn't cost a ton of money. Now that's from the building owner side. They need to take a take a look at that. And then from the integrator side, is we we are supposed to be the experts in what we do. So we need to get somebody in our organization that is doing their homework and knows at least how to coach the customer. Um, mm -hmm. There are there are things out there like NIST 800, and I would say it's a hard read for most people. Um, yeah. But they do have some, just these bullet points on the side, identify, protect, detect, um, and this is a summary. And I would recommend you know, just don't, you can read all the literature, but to me, what we have in these few slides, identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Yeah. Be, be honest with yourself. How, how much of this do you have in place? How much of this do yeah. you know about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, uh, it doesn't have to be extremely hard to do, right? I mean, you can walk around with a clipboard and, and start identifying the devices that you have. So that, that's identify. Like, know what you have there. Know that you have a DSL connection to this control in your basement. Um, protecting, I mean, it doesn't have to be extremely complicated. You can buy a simple firewall for a few bucks, and, and it gives you a little bit, at least. Uh, detection. Uh, you know, it's a, a newer topic. It's a little bit harder, but there's some simple things like uh, looking at what you said, the, the, the Active Directory, sorry, the, the, the user logins that you have. Maybe pull up some logs once in a while. Um, respond and recover. I mean, these are creating plans. What happens if you did, did get hit? So, um, but let's focus on the first three, identify, protect, and detect. Um, and you start talking about some concrete things we can do today. So you said, know what you have. So that's, uh, we asked the question earlier, how many uh, systems are connected online? Um, and, and I think the response was something like 91%. So it was 67. Correctly? Yeah, it was 67. Oh, 67 no, the first one was 90. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 90, 90 some percent. Um, and I, you know, is it is it 90% with one connection? Is it ninety percent or one connection plus one you don't know about? That that's kind of what the, the know what you have. And then what you said, you know, the, the chiller that's in the backyard that's that's barely fenced and not watched. Uh, do you have a device that's rogue out there that 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 you don't know about? Um, that that's what this this know what you have, right? Uh, you mentioned a little bit already about combining physical security, digital security, a really powerful um, uh, approach and. It doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, you can set up a security system pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, this, go ahead. Yeah, we're going to come back to that third bullet: uh, firewalls, network, network security. And we will talk a little bit about that. But it, let's go to the example you were saying. So we bypass the firewall. We're there physically. Um, mm -hmm. What can we do to protect ourselves? I mean, is there some basic things we can do? Well, the uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of over. The, the years that I've been doing this is the, the building control system is typically not locked up somewhere. I mean, some people right. will say it's locked up. It's in the office. But it shouldn't be on the, the engineer's desk where everybody can use it for email. Because even if you're not publicly exposed, meaning your IP is out there and anybody can get to it, if you're using your control system to look at Facebook or whatever or email, you could get something dropped in that actually punches back out. Now you do have a hold to the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And, and, and again, for us from the optical side, uh, that's one of the things we talk quite a bit about. There's some simple things, and, and, and uh, if you're using any sort of managed switch, and hopefully everyone out there is moving towards using managed switches, there's some very simple things like Mac filtering you can set up, disabling the port that you're not using, a port that's, a, that's just on the, on, the, on the wall, open because you think maybe one day you're going to add a thermostat there, you know, block it off, close it. These are really simple things an IT guy can do in, in a few minutes. It doesn't take very long. Um, these are some some easy easy ways to do to do it, right? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, we were saying here uh, regular reviews. So, uh, can you maybe give some some examples of of things, simple things we can review that that makes us a little bit more secure? Sure. Um, and this is what I teach people when I go out there is you know regularly review. Your users are the, are you changing the username and passwords? Set in a, a regularly. Because going back to the ex employee, the next thing you need to do is take a look and see if your integrator has a backdoor in your system. And that that almost has a bad connotation, and I don't want it to it, because backdoor sounds like it's evil. But it's it's the service port if you want to look at it that way. The integrator put it in, and if they ever need to come in and help you, they have a user in there that they can get in. Well. There's some stats, and I don't have the exact number, but there are stats that say that typically the breach comes from a third-party vendor. Okay, so you need to review that. You also, um, as I said, find out who's admin, but you need to stay on top of how your network's configured. Now that sounds like a simple thing, but if it's not, if, if for instance, using your example, being if they don't have managed switches in there. You know, somebody could come in and pop out a switch, put a new one in, and they may say, oh, well, while I'm here, I'm going to hook up this uh, printer to it. Or, yep. you know, they could be hooking up who knows what. So you need to do that. And then finally, and not finally, it's not the last thing, if you have an IT department, um, review with them how you're set up and let them right. give you some guidance. Right. And uh, I want to come right back to the third bullet because to me that's that's probably one of the funnest part of it. And we, uh, for those who are not as, as in depth with the cybersecurity world, uh, the concept of social engineering is, is a very uh, interesting topic. Yes. Uh, so awareness and training is probably one of the biggest component, at least today, when it comes to cybersecurity. And that's not just for the, the OT world, the building automation world, but uh, but across across the, the whole premise uh, prism of, of cybersecurity, um, can you tell us a little bit about where can we start to educate and provide some more awareness? Um, well, let me get a make sure that I'm on the same page. Are you you're speaking you're speaking strictly <laughs> on the human aspect of it, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's strictly on the human aspect. Yeah. Um, the the thing that gets most people is the phishing emails, if you've heard of that. Um, and the reason I bring that up first is because that's usually the way that a lot of a lot of access has gotten because that same study that I told you about the 243 days also said that 100% of the breaches have happened with known or real username and password. Well, how do you get yep. that? So that's the human yep. aspect. Don't share your usernames and passwords with people. Don't click something that you don't know is there. But then also, one of the things that we encourage is, and it, it's too long to go into, but a, just like safety awareness, you need to have a cybersecurity awareness. And companies, and some insurance companies are actually requiring that as part of their policy. So right. you, you, you tell people the things to look for, uh, you, you Continually remind it your indoctrination of a new employee or whatever the case may be needs to include right. that as part of your uh, your onboarding. Right. No, thank you very much. Uh, we do have a question from um, Eduardo. He um, he asked uh, for sites that do have firewalls. Any particular recommendation on how to better configure the security set settings to avoid unauthorized access to the BBMD? Um, I'll take that one, uh, Fred, um, just because of my background a little bit. Yeah, here. absolutely. Probably the best way to do it here is when you do put BBMDs out there, you typically know where you want to tunnel to, 
where what you want to connect two sites three sites two segments three segments the the and it's a fairly easy fairly easy thing to do is first of all only open the port that you need so in this case I think it's four seven eight oh eight or or that range number one number two make sure the traffic goes to and from particular pairs uh, so a, a IP routing rule and again it's fairly easy to set up so if you know the IP address of one BBMD and you know the IP address of the other BBMD lock it down to just those two addresses uh, so if someone sends a who is from outside what you showed us earlier if you send a who is to targeting to the BBMD the firewall will catch that it did not come from that IP address and it should lock it down now what I just said there it will it will not prevent uh, if if any one BBMD is exposed that falls apart because you cannot put a rule a simple rule that says that uh, it came it rerouted from one trusted source to another trusted destination it, that that breaks apart for the firewall side of things but uh, if you know the BBMDs you have out there you can do a who is network um, to, to find them all out in, in your own settings, then set the proper IP uh, routing rules, and that, that should cover cover your butt pretty good. I want to add one last thing. You, you yeah, brought up the port. the port. Uh, they come out of the box 47808. I always tell people, change the default port. Make it a little more difficult for them to find it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good one. I like it. Um, okay. Uh, Fred, should we should we move on? Sure. This is uh, so. You want to talk about your upcoming, or you want to go to questions? Yeah, just a very very quick note here uh, for those who are online. Um, you, we have three other webinars coming up. Uh, hopefully, it is interesting. One, it's more about BACnet. We're we're doing a a follow up to the last webinar we did, which is how to troubleshoot using one of our tools called Visual BACnet. Uh, there will be a small component of cybersecurity in it, but very small. Uh, one that will be very interesting is particularly just straight up in BACnet. So the continuation to this conversation, we'll probably look a little bit more to the frames themselves, looking at how to use frames like Whois and IM routers, and, and how to look at the, those messages to um, to see if you're vulnerable and how to protect yourselves. Uh, and then a topic uh, very close to our product called Path to Optical Networking on the 19th of October. So uh, anyone interested, go to optical.net slash webinar uh, to sign up and we'd love to have all of you attend for that. Uh, Fred, do you want to say a couple more words about perhaps intelligent buildings and what you, uh, where, where they should go for help? And then we'll go to question and answers. Absolutely. Um, well, first off, and it's intelligentbuildings.com, and you can get information about our cybersecurity uh, offerings there. Uh, but I always, I try to remain fairly open to questions and comments and that kind of thing. So I'm on LinkedIn. I've got my contact information in there, but it's fred.gordy at intelligentbuildings.com, and would love to talk to you. And and what we, what this offer is several. I'll give you the high level. The high level is it may be something strictly at the to get a uh, to help you write your policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. We also do uh, penetration tests. When I say penetration, excuse me, let me back up and say this: we we will hack your control systems to see how vulnerable you are. Um, there's I differentiate on that for a reason, but anyway, the um, that's another service we offer. And then the the hardcore. We come in and physically audit everything. Uh, All right. Us. So that's that's the one, and, and honestly, I'm getting beginning to get more of those than I am the easy ones, and which is good with me. <laughs> I like them. But uh, yeah, yeah I mean, but as I said earlier, intelligent buildings is, uh, you know, they we really strive to be the customer advocate, and we really want to know what it is that you want to accomplish, whether it be smart buildings, cybersecurity. But as always, and they know around here, when they start talking about doing something, I just always interject, and it better be safe. Yeah, that, that, that's very good. And uh, to everyone here, uh, I'll tell you, Fred is uh, more than happy to answer any questions. So if you have a general question, you're like, hey, I'm, I, I, I'm just kind of curious how bad things are for me, uh, shoot him an email. 
uh, drop him a, a, give him a call. I, I know he'll be more than happy to take your call here. Um, and same for us, uh, Optigo, we're a manufacturer, but uh, this is a passionate topic for us. We're in a small community. Uh, it's an important topic. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer questions. If you have any questions, uh, it doesn't have to be, to be business oriented. Again, we're, we're happy to do that. So uh, as we're going to go to Q&A, um, I would like to also bring forward a third question that we had prepared. Now that we've gone through this 50-minute conversation about you know, the vulnerability and showing you real vulnerability, not, not just talking about high level, and it's not just you know, the very critical sites, the sites with a lot to protect that are exposed, that, sorry, that are under attack. Um, Fred showed us how easy it is to get to them. And then we talked a little bit about what can we do to secure it, to, to be less vulnerable. Uh, so after this uh, question, are you 100% confident nothing on your building control network is exposed to the public? Are you 100% confident you are not vulnerable to cyber attacks? Um, we'd love to well, get your, your answers there. And I want to interject while you're thinking about this, make sure that what we're talking about here is not just a publicly exposed IP. It's, is your control system head in being used to surf the web? If it is, then you're exposed. So, <laughs> yeah. got to ask yourself that. So, we have a question here. Uh, after hearing all this, does it mean we should go back into the MFTP world? Does it mean we should go back into not using Ethernet or IP? Uh, mm -hmm. Fred, a great question. Uh, Fred, what do you think? I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, just because, I mean, I have people tell me, well, I guess the best thing I need to do is just pull it off the web and make <laughs> a, you know, and do all that. I said, look, no, because the thing is, is these systems offer a lot of value, and that value is, this, is the accessibility. What we're saying yeah. is don't don't go back just to two wire. Just like all of your servers that are in your office building, your all the assets that you have that are not control system, those can sit on the web. I mean or can sit on the network and, and everything else. So don't let it scare you that all of this stuff is going on. It's 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 get I like to call it the three rings. You have the IT bubble on the outside, you have the people component on the inside of that wall and then you have the control system. So if you have your IT assets strengthened and your people assets strengthened and your control system is not exposed, then you're okay. Not 100%. Yep. <laughs> not 100%. <Excellent>. <laughs> we have a couple other questions, but before we go into them, I just want to say a big thank you to all those who attended. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, it was really great to put this together. Um, Fred, thank you very much for your time. Again, we'll, we'll be talking a lot. We're part of a, a tech community. We see each other a lot. But thank you for your time. Uh, we hope this is helpful. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Please don't hesitate to give us some comments. If you disagree with some things we said or have different views or different advice, uh, send them out and, and we'll make it available to all those who attended the, the webinar. So again, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Ben. And, uh, oh, thank you. So uh, one last question here. Um, do we, I, I, this is a question from me, do we think we're going to get to a point where this problem will be resolved? There is no resolution. Do, you, I mean, do we I, think that one day you won't have a job? <laughs> um, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, and I'm, I'm not 20 years old, so I probably won't be here when it is. But, no, I went to, if you don't mind, I went to a, a, a thing that had, uh, I was the only guy there that wasn't a lawyer, okay? And it was, right. <laughs> that was interesting. But anyway, the panel that was up there was uh, the head of Georgia Tech's Research Institute for Cybersecurity, and then a Mossad agent. If you're not familiar with that, that's an Israeli. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And and he's their, he was their cyber guru. And then the other one was from uh, Germany, whatever their special forces guy, or, you know, NSA kind of thing. They all, uh, one of the attorneys asked that very question, and all three of them almost in unison said, there is no, this is a problem for which there is no solution. Now, 
don't want to scare you to death, but the, the thing about it is keep in mind that these systems were made by humans, and if a human makes it, then another human yep. can crack it. Yeah, and in and, and the cybersecurity world, there's, there's one uh, saying that unfortunately time is against the protector, and that, mm -hmm. that time is on the side of the attacker. Well, real quick, you know as well as I do, the thing is we're at a disadvantage here because we cannot do anything till we're hit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. You don't know, you don't know how to defend until you're hit. That's right, that's right. And it's not back in the days of the war where you could see planes come in or, or boats come in. Yeah, it should be hard. Uh, we have one question, great question from Dan here. Uh, you mentioned uh, insurance companies starting to mm -hmm. talk more cybersecurity. Can, can you give us a couple of words on that one? This, the insurance community is, um, you know, they don't, they've been trying to figure out how to have this all place, but they are beginning to look at things such as, like I said earlier, the cybersecurity awareness programs, but also um, the other thing that they're doing is they're, they're saying, um, they're, they're taking a look at how you are doing your business, how are your vendors, uh, what is their security, and there's a lot of clauses in there you got to be careful with that may or may not cover you, but one interesting case happened in November of last year, at least I read it in November of last year. There was an entity that got hacked and the insurance company paid the claim, okay? But just like, you know, on workers' comp, when you go get workers' comp and you're walking around and your back's hurt but you're out there lifting weights, and, you know, somebody catches you doing that, then you, you get, you got to pay all that back. Well, this insurance company found out that this entity did not protect their assets, didn't do all their due diligence to protect their assets, and they sued them to get the money back. Oh, wow, okay. But so, um, are, are insurance companies starting to adjust their premium based on the level of cybersecurity yes. of their clients? Yeah? Yeah, actually, um, they're using the IoT search engines to see how you're exposed, and they're kind of building a health list I you know, like uh, the commercial where you plug the little thing in your car and it tells you how you're driving? Well, they, they're using the IoT search engines, and, and if you come in to get insurance, the first thing they're going to do is pull a list and see if your name pops up. But, yes, they are wow. being – they're saying, if you do this, we will do, give you this program, like the cybersecurity awareness uh, training that you do with your people, so on and so forth. But, yes, they are beginning to stagger out the, the premium. Yeah. Well, Fred, this is the end of it. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you to all those who attended again. Um, thank you, and see you on the next webinar. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Take care.